I don't know if there is any truth to this story or not, but it's said that Britain faced a critical shortage of silver during World War II, and so Winston Churchill launched a search of possible sources. It was found that the, throughout the country were many silver statues of saints in churches and cathedrals, and when Churchill was made aware of this, he said, well, it's time to put those saints into circulation. What a wonderful quote for the church in these difficult times. It is Mothering Sunday today, a day when we think of our mums, people who we value immensely, a day when we thank God for them and for all they have done for us. But it strikes me that on this day more than ever, we need to make the most of what we have been given. As a vicar, I take funerals and I always arrive early. In doing so, I ring my mum. And so whenever I ring my mum, the first thing that she asks is, are you taking a funeral? As I wait to take that funeral, I often walk around the cemetery looking at the graves of those who in many respects have been gone for a long time. And what I wonder is what were their loves, their passions, their dreams, their regrets? And what, if they were able to speak now, would they say? I'm sure it certainly wouldn't be, I wish I'd worked more hours, or I wish I'd got more stuff. It would surely be, I wish I had made the most of what I had when I had it. As I look at those graves of those who have died, what I see is a dash, a line between the day they were born and the day they died. All of us, of course, have that first date in front of us, and one day, a day not known to each of us, we will have the second. One of, if not my favourite film of all time, is The Christmas Carol. How Scrooge is taken by three spirits to look at his past, his present and his future. As we all know, the last makes him look upon his own grave. The image of his name carved upon a stone sends fear right through him. And all of a sudden, his life takes on a new meaning. Everything he has lived for, everything he has done is suddenly meaningless, and he begs for a chance to make it right. All of us have all of a sudden been thrust into a situation where we have to take stock of what's important. And surely on this day, above all, it is to love those most closest to us. With the date on our left clearly marked as a celebration, where we blow out candles, get presents and celebrate, the date on the right, however, we push away. None of us likes that thought, and we would do almost anything to extend it. But we can't change either of those dates. But what we can change is the dash. In the New Testament book of James, we read, why you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a while and then vanishes. The writer of the Psalms also says, my days disappear like smoke, for we are like a breath of air, our days like a passing shadow. And in the book of Job, we read, my days run out quicker than the thread of a fast moving needle. We would, I'm sure, all agree that life is unspeakably precious and short where the needle of our lives moves faster and faster and we don't know when our time on earth will be up. It could be decades, it could be weeks, only God knows. So why am I being so morbid, especially on this day when we celebrate something so wonderful, our mums? Well, in today's gospel reading, Jesus tells us the parable of a man going on a journey who has left his property in the hands of his servants, where each is given different amounts. Jesus is the man, and we the servants. And what Jesus wants his hearers to see is how prepared are we? And what are we doing with our dash? In biblical times, wealthy landowners often entrusted their property to trustworthy servants. And in today's money, he distributed almost two million pounds. And so the original hearers of this story would have been shocked at the amount the landowner had entrusted to them. In reality, Jesus was revealing the enormity of the value that has been entrusted to us, his servants. In the parable, each is given differing amounts, and I think that we can all identify with the fact that some have more than others. Not all of us have the same degree of gifts, talents, or even opportunities. And yet, while we can accept that, it is hard to understand why. What becomes problematic in this story, though, is the response of the landowner upon his return. The one to whom is given the least, and who in his anxiety hides his gift, 
is given the most severe of judgment. The story then switches to the second coming of Jesus, where he is accompanied with his angels and where he sits upon his throne. It's the moment when all have used up their dash and when each is asked to give an account for what they have done. Today's gospel reading reveals that one day there will be a leveling, that all of us will be called to give an account for the life that we have been given, the choices that we have made, that life is of such immense value that to just bury it brings severe consequences. While we might be tempted to worry about what we haven't done, the emphasis ought, I think, to be not to reflect back on what might have been, but on what we can still do. Not all of us are given the same gifts or the same opportunities, but all of us can be productive in our own unique way. In the film Click, Adam Sander plays the part of Michael Newman, who is a hard-working man wanting to advance in his career for his wife and his children, but he finds it really hard to balance the two. One night, he becomes really frustrated when the television remote breaks, and so he heads out to find a new universal remote, winding up in a store called Bed, Bath and Beyond. There he meets an inventor who gives him a remote so powerful it allows him to fast forward, rewind and pause the events of his life. What happens as the film goes on is that Michael discovers he can fast forward his life to his promotion. But what escapes him is an entire year. And before he realises the remote has taken a life of his own, fast-forwarding his whole life with tragic consequences. I have been immensely privileged to sit by the bedsides of many who are at the end of their dash. And while some have said they are content to move on, I have, in the eyes and voice of others, heard regret of wasted opportunities and fast-forwarded lives. I guarantee that if you knew you only had one month to live, the way that you would spend those next 30 days would be radically transformed, as was Scrooge's. But here is the multi-million dollar question. Why do we wait until we're diagnosed with an illness, confronted with an epidemic, or lose a loved one until we embrace the gift of making the most of what we have? Many people, of course, spend their lives doing precious, amazing and valuable things. But Jesus' parable is there this morning as a reminder of what so can easily be forgotten. We can all choose how we spend our dash, how we value those we love, and how we spend our lives on others. Will we use it for ourselves? Will we treasure those we love beyond measure while they are still with us? Will we share our lives and resources more within our community? We might, of course, ask in the context of church this morning, what did Jesus do when he knew he only had a month to live? The answer is, he did what he always did. He lived the same as he always lived. Jesus didn't change a thing because he spent his whole dash living passionately, loving completely, and learning humbly, and at the end, leaving triumphantly. If we live our lives as Jesus did, then we will truly learn to live our dash, rather than dashing to live. In St Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he says, We are no longer our own. We were bought at a price. Therefore, let us honour God with our bodies. There is a universal tendency to compare what we have with others and wish that we had what they do. I think we may have all wished that we were either thinner, richer, better looking, had more hair, had the house or car of our neighbour, or maybe even to sing like someone on The Voice. But if we spend our lives wishing for what someone else has, we may just miss out on the life that we have been given. At the end of the day, God will not ask us why we didn't live someone else's life, invest in someone else's gifts, or take up the opportunities that someone else has been given. What will be asked is what did you do for the people you knew, the family that you were born into, the gifts and resources that you were given? Life matters. Our dash matters so much. Imagine you are in your own Christmas carol, and you are there with the last of the spirits where you're led into a room where there are two chairs, one for you 
and the other for God. In front of you is a DVD player, and on the DVD is the title, What Might Have Been. Imagine watching all that God wanted to do in and through you, if only you had let him. Imagine seeing all the lives that you might have touched, the hopeless situations that you might have changed. Imagine seeing what you might have done, if only you had given Christ the opportunity to use you. Our lives matter. And so as we worship this morning, thanking God for our mums and those who have been a mum to us, the life that they have given and the love that we want to give them back in return, let us also remember that our dash is not yet complete, that in this time of crisis, we can truly make a difference. And so let me leave you with this thought. How will you make the most of what you have been given? Amen.